breaking bond. A 20 year old accused of aggravated robbery violates his bond conditions more than a thousand times and gets rewarded for it. Fox <laughs> Smash and um, what? <laughs> there's there's so many videos of this of this news reporter dancing, like on TikTok or, or Facebook Reels or something. She's always on there. A bit. And tonight's That's... breaking bond: a 20 year old accused of aggravated robbery violates his bond conditions more than a thousand times and gets rewarded for it. Fox 26's Randy Wallace joining us live in the studio to explain what happened as part of his exclusive ongoing series. Randy, another crazy one. Yeah, Caroline. Now, according to court documents, Edwin Maldonado spent many months thumbing his nose at what he was ordered by the court to do. His punishment for that is more like a prize. You got someone who was rewarded for being a failure. And this guy was a failure over 1,000 some odd times. First, 20-year-old Edwin Maldonado gets a felony charge for drug possession. A few weeks later, he's charged with aggravated robbery with a deadly weapon. He makes his $30,000 bond and walks out of jail. But I certainly have had clients hauled back into court on uh, violations that are maybe two or three uh, times you know, that have been alleged. Associate Judge Tiffany Hill presided over a bond revocation hearing for Maldonado. For obvious reasons, I mean, you're... You're not abiding by your rules and conditions, period. And God knows what he was doing when he wasn't where he was supposed to be. According to court documents, Maldonado failed to comply with any of his bond conditions for eight months. According to his GPS monitor, he left his curfew zone 847 times. Was <laughs> Seems excessive. I mean, like, what are we doing, man? <laughs> like, what, what's going on in America, man? Salute the, to the, the Luck 247. Glider man. punishment. Yeah, salute um, the Luck 247, a.k.a. Cal Ripken, a.k.a. the real MVP coming through once again, man. Salute to you, man. Um, we got a glider system that's colliding with uh, non-gliders, and it's just Looney Tunes. Yeah. I mean, god damn, that's a lot of fucking time. Like I tell you, I, I I don't leave the house most days. And I'm not on house arrest. This dude left his curfew zone eight hundred and forty seven. God damn. I mean, who does that? Who leaves the house eight hundred and forty seven times in eight months? I always say <laughs> house arrest was backed up by uh, by violence. Like you left your house, we're gonna be, we're gonna kill you, or something like that. That's what I used to. That's what I used, that's what I used to think. Nah, man. Nah, this is a glider glider world, man. Yeah, the glider no, would just no stay. ice cream for you. Yeah, I mean, the apostle the, the apostle Paul was under house arrest, so you need uh, a shot that, that <laughs> If he if they go bomb, beyond bomb that zone, I'm gonna bomb collar. That too. <laughs> I mean, this is just this is this is crazy, man. For eight months, according to his GPS monitor, he left his curfew zone eight hundred and forty-seven times. Was called four hundred and fifty-three times about his whereabouts, and had more than one thousand GPS monitor violations. So they called him, trying to find him. You got to mute yourself, Monty. You, you, they they called him. Trying to find him 453 times. This is what it actually means to not give a fuck. <laughs> I mean, at some point, man, you gliders are just going to have to fucking recognize that there's differences race is not a construct it's not a social construct race is real these people would have developed a different system that this guy would have abided by or which have, would have nullified the threat of him committing crime they would have maybe built a a, a pyramid structure <laughs> marched him to the top and 
done open heart surgery on him. I don't know. I've heard some things like that used to happen in the past, but they definitely would not have sent him home and let him fucking run around and fucking do this shit all day. I think it's safe to say, I think we all can agree that the group of people this guy come from, whatever justice system they organically came up with as a like-minded people, the zeitgeist of their collective, you know, their collective society would have created, would have not been anything like this. No, they would have cut his head off and thrown it through a hula hoop <laughs> at sundown or some shit. Yeah. And never had to worry about this shit again. 47 times was called 453 times about his whereabouts and had more than 1,000 GPS monitor violations. Over 1,000 times. 1,043 to be exact. And I've never seen that in my life. In my 27 years, I've never seen anything like that. And I had never heard of it until you brought it up to me today. Court documents state Judge Hill found the state proved by a preponderance of the evidence the defendant violated his bond conditions. The judge then actually lowered the original bond from 30000 to 5000 I can tell you that that is a very rare decision for any judge to make, having found that someone was in violation of their bond, but then leaving them on bond. Normally, um, a judge will, would find that they're in violation and either raise it, uh, double it, or revoke it. The DA's office asked 230th Criminal District Court Judge Chris Morton to reconsider or modify the associate judge's ruling and revoke or raise Maldonado's bond. Morton agreed with Hill that bond should be lowered to five grand. I don't know what kind of message that you're sending, but I don't think this is obviously in the best interest of public safety. Judge Tiffany Hill wanted to give Maldonado a personal recognizance bond, but state law prohibits that for an aggravated robbery charge. Maldonado has yet to post the $5,000 bond. Randy Wallace, Fox 26 News.